So we got a rematch on our hands. And you know what? I was a little confused as to why this happened. And the only reason um, that I can think of right now why this fight is happening is because the women's flyweight division, with it being headlined by Valentina Shevchenko being such a dominant force at the top, they're playing just a roulette of like, all right, let's just shuffle the deck and fight because who else am I going to fight? If you're Caitlin Chukagian, you're doing whatever you can to fight Valentina Shevchenko again in, in another title shot. Well, Jennifer Maya, she had a more recent title shot at Valentina than Chukagian has. So I guess it kind of makes sense. But I will say in their first fight, um, listen, Jennifer Maya, she missed weight. Uh, Chukagian got an easy win, unanimous decision. It was a striking contest. And I'm curious to know, why do you think Caitlin Chukagian at minus 170 is a little too low in terms of odds with the plus 145 comeback for Maya? Like if she got the job done so definitively in her last, in the first fight and Maya missed weight in that fight, what exactly has changed so much in the last five bouts or so between the two to where, you know, people think Jennifer Maya has a real deal chance at just getting the job done? Like what, what exactly is so different about this matchup right now with these two fighters? I think it's the fact that uh, Jennifer Maya had that one round against Valentina Shevchenko where everybody thought that she was able to hold her down yeah. and it was the you know the queen losing her throne you know before we actually saw that happen. Yeah. I think that's really the 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 crux of why she's not a bigger favorite because I agree one of the notes I have here is that if if neither fighter change it's literally going to be the exact same fight yeah. or if both of them got better at what they're good at it's going to be the exact same fight i think we're just shuffling the deck and letting you know uh chances for other fighters to kind of come back and it's what you have to do in the women's division yeah. because it's so light but really i mean jennifer Maya, if she's able to take chukagian down we saw chukagian get held down by was it cynthia calvillo i, I forget but mm -hmm. either way she's she's not she's a lot better in the clinch and in the stand-up than she is on the ground, Caitlin Chukagan anyway, uh, yeah. where, where Jennifer Maya is a lot better on the ground. If she's able to take her down, then it'll be a little bit more interesting of a fight, at least at least in, in my eyes. If we're able to see something a little different, it's not just a striking contest, then I'm leaning a little bit more towards Maya in this one. But either way, I, I'm with you. I don't really see exactly why this is going down if, if stakes are on the table. So let's just take a look at Caitlin Chukagian um, and her last couple of fight, uh, last couple of fights, excuse me. So you'll see that um, she's been taken down by Viviani Ahaljo, uh, right? One takedown. She got taken down by Calvillo, one takedown. Uh, and she won both of those fights, right? Jessica Andrade took her down twice, and that you know ended up finishing her. So that might be what you're referring to. Uh, she was able to dominate Antonina Shevchenko, but got dominated by Valentina Shevchenko. She gets kind of taken down in majority of her fights. And even again in the Jennifer Maya fight, Jennifer Maya wasn't able to register the takedown until round three. It was a little too little too late at that point, where Chukagan already pretty much got the job done on the points. But it did show that when Jennifer Maya was able to get the takedown, I mean, it was pretty pretty strong in, the, in that takedown, being able to hold Chukagan down. So I think that is literally, that is the must happen situation if you're Jennifer Maya and if you want to win this fight because the reach and the height disparities are still the same. 5'4 to 5'9. Chikagian got a 5-inch height advantage and we're talking about reach 68 inches to 64. 4-inch reach advantage for Caitlin Chikagian. If she can just use her long jab, keep the fight at distance, I agree with you. Rinse, wash, repeat. I don't see what's different about this. However, in a universe where Jennifer Maya from the opening bell gets Chikagian, puts her on her butt and that's the focus, that's the game plan, do you think Caitlin Chikagian can get up from Jennifer Maya because she is an incredible grappler dude incredible she has five submissions uh in her 19 career wins she only has nine finishes but this is not anything new for the flyweight division and lastly lastly before let me just give the last caveat Caitlin Chukagan if she wins this fight she becomes the first fighter in the UFC's women's division to have 10 career wins in the octagon without a finish they will all be decision victories so I just wanted to put that out there but what do you think do you think that she'll be able to get up from Jennifer Maya I think so, man. I think and, and I think it was the Jessica Andrade fight I was talking about where she was continuously taken down. Anytime you hear Caitlin Chukagian, you know she's a striker. Yeah. But she has been getting way better, way better on the ground and actually standing things up. We saw in the uh, Hojo fight that, yeah, she was taken down once but was able to keep things going after that, man. Yeah. Stay on her feet. I think Caitlin Chukagian is getting way better at the, that aspect of the ground game. And if she can bring that going into this fight and then forward, we're going to see better things coming from Chukagian. 
Yeah, yeah. I I hear you, brother, on that one, man. She's number two in the division right now. So it's like literally, <laughs> do you, I mean, I, I want to ask you seriously, do you think it's Valentina, Caitlyn Chikagin, and then the rest? Like, is that how you view the division? Or do you view it as in like, okay, there's a lot of competitors in there. Because when I pull up the rankings right now, let me just pull it up real fast, just so we can kind of get a little bit of a visual. Um, so when I pull up the rankings, and we're looking at um, the women's flyweight division okay so here we are so let me pull this down for a second okay you got valentina shevchenko uh jessica andraj so i guess i kind of forgot about jessica andraj apologies for that shout out to you <laughs> jessica but uh caitlin chikagan you got lauren murphy who's uh, apparently about to be fighting uh misha tate for whatever reason in the flyweight division i don't know how she gets number three just off the bat um jennifer maya tyler santos who is the dark horse in the division who i definitely think will be one of the next to challenge valentina for the championship viviani arajo uh you know joanne wood andrea lee so basically just take a look at the list do you think that caitlin chikagian and Jessica Andrade, I guess, the one and two, and then it's the rest of the division? Or do you think there's some like real contenders in here still? No, I do see a big uh, a big drop-off, maybe after top five. Because you do have Jen – I mean, Jennifer Maya is amazing. So is Lauren Murphy. Jessica Andrade is an absolute beast in there. And I think, the like you said, the dark horse is really Tyler Santos. Yeah. And then after that, it kind of really drops off with, with a lot of the fighters that have either had up and down in their fights or yeah. they just haven't really been too active as of late. Luckily, we're starting to see a lot more of these fights kind of happening. But if we get, let's say, that Tyler Santos jumps up to number three – and it's, you know, it's our number four. And then you have Andraj, Kushkegi, and Santos. And then a real big drop off after that. I mean, we'll, we'll start to see as more things unfold. But really, the, the disparity of talent is definitely there. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you, man. So I guess to kind of... Uh put this hold on let me get myself back there we yeah. go to kind of put myself uh, to put ourselves in a situation where we can contextualize this stuff and we can kind of get an understanding about what jessica maya needs to do in this fight when you look at her fight against uh jessica i right that was kind of a striking contest when you think about the coin slot on uh jessica i's forehead you you would remember it as oh jennifer maya was putting it on her it was actually a headbutt so it's like, okay, that's actually not as impressive as I thought, even though she was still piecing her up on the feet. I mean, Jennifer Maya got outstruck 98 to 100, but she still did some damage on the feet, had uh, Jessica I bloodied up. Jennifer Maya has registered one takedown, two takedowns in her last five fights, man. So it's like, unless she has real urgency in this, unless she has real deal urgency to be like, okay, I need to get the takedown. I need to make this happen with legitimate urgency. Like I said, I just think it's kind of going to be Valentina Shevchenko, or not Valentina, Caitlin Chikagian, rinse, wash, repeat, kind of doing the thing again. So with that being said, the over and under is two and a half rounds. Do you think, well, do you think there's going over or under and who are you picking, brother? Yeah, man, I'm going with the over on this one. I think just it's, it's going to be these fighters know each other so much that it's hard to do, whether if it's Caitlin Chikagian getting in her flow and then we see a decision or it's a very up and down washing machine kind of fight with Jennifer Maya doing better. Because I like Jennifer Maya's style, man. She has that kind of that bouncy that, that keeps the high guard bouncing in and out, kind of like a, a young little Mike Tyson. She has the power to get it done, too. But with each other, with the fighters knowing each other so well, it's going to be a long fight, I think. And I'm going Caitlin Chikagian by decision. Yeah, just yeah. how I see it going down. What about you, Derek? Well, in the striking, I think that Jennifer Maya has definitely improved since the these two fighters' first original bout. But the one difference I see is that Jennifer Maya she has some some good work in the clinch. But you know who has better work in the clinch? Caitlin Jukagian, right? You know she's taller, longer, longer knees. You know, um, body work is going to be a little bit more there for Caitlin Jukagian. And it was actually that Jessica Andrade fight, wasn't it, where she got hit with the with the liver shot and then turned away and was that right? So it's like, yeah, I mean that that's a little something that people could still try to take advantage of work that liver of Caitlin Chikagian, but I think that her footwork is too good. She's either in or out. She's not stuck in the pocket right there, willing to trade and get hit like that. So I'm going Caitlin Chikagian. I'm going a decision win over here. I'm taking the over. Uh, minus 170, man. I honestly think that this should be closer to a minus 250, minus 300 for Caitlin Chikagian, just because this is all hinging on can Jennifer Maya hold her down for three rounds, basically, in my opinion. <laughs>